Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today we are taking a look at the Microlog Synthesizer that comes with Cubasis and also Roomworks SE Reverb, which also comes with Cubasis, right? So it's gonna be a deep dive. We're gonna do some cool stuff. I'll take you through all the sections, how it works. It's a really simple synthesizer, but it's really very good as well. It sounds lively. So basic patch here, I'll just switch that glide off. So going from left to right on the Voices Oscillator page, you have your voice section here where you can set your polyphony. You can either have it up to eight voices, six is, vo is fine. And you can have it mono. And it's top or bottom, no priority if you play legato. And then above this, put that back to poly, you have your glide, so. Up to five seconds. And it's also, if it's in poly mode, it's also polyphonic glide, so. Which is very nice. Let's turn that off in a moment. Then you have your main um, tuning, your octaves, so. I hold one note. This will affect both oscillators. Then you have oscillator one, which has four uh, waveforms. We have sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square. You can also adjust the pulse width modulation and modulate the square wave when you go into the mod section here. In fact, I'll to show you that jump over to mod and you'll see we have pulse width modulation which is linked to the lfo double tap any of these to reset let's go back to the voices you have one lfo but that can be assigned to the pitch the cutoff or the pulse width modulation as well anyway so oscillator two is identical to oscillator one. If we bring up the level here, uh, I'll have this on a sawtooth so you can hear it. And you can also set the coarse tuning and the fine tuning for either oscillator. So we could take this one down, an octave or up an octave or anywhere in between. We can also, if we have these both set on a uh, square, it does sound exactly the same, right? But we can then, let's adjust the volumes a little bit so it's a bit quieter. What we can do then is adjust the fine tuning so they go slightly out of phase and get a chorusing effect. And un unlike the pulse width modulation, we can, of course, do this with any of these and mix and match. Awesome stuff. Okay, so... Leave it on that sound we've got there. Let's move. Oh, yeah. And then last but not least, you have a noise oscillator. So it's basic stuff. Let's move on to our filter. I'm guessing it's a 24 dB low pass. It's a, it's a low pass filter, maybe 12 or 24 dB. And it's a resonant filter. So we have this cutoff hill, which will cut down to nothing. And then we have resonance, which will apply a peak at the cutoff. So if we set that here, and it's self, almost self-oscillating, I think. There you go. Then you have your filter envelope here. Of course, for your filter envelope to work, you need to give it some amount at least and also something for the filter, uh, the envelope to work on the filter because at the moment, all frequencies are passing through the filter. Let's turn that up a little bit here with the uh, main level. So let's set this about here. And let's give the envelope something to do. Take the sustain down. More. We can go negative, positive, and we can all ha also have the uh, the filter respond to velocity if we have our velocity set here. Let's do something with our. 
Let's do something with our amp envelope as well. So at the moment, velocity is set at zero. Let's set this to something similar to the amp envelope. So at the moment, if I just hit a key very quietly, it won't, you know, it's going to be the same level. But if I turn velocity up now, the harder I hit the key, the harder it's going to work. If I use the filter, the harder I hit the key, the more the filter is going to open. Turn it up a little bit. But I don't want that effect on there, and for now, I want to turn the velocity off. Okay, so that's your filter, that yeah, amp and filter section. So. Lovely. Modulation and effects, like I said, the LFO, you've got one LFO, and that will modulate either the pitch, the pulse width mod, or the cutoff. So let's try it with the cutoff. Now, we know we've got some cutoff applied, so we're going to put some resonance in as well. Lovely. Okay. So now if I move my pitch, the LFO is going to modulate the pitch. And you have plus positive and negative. So. This is your rate, of course. It goes quite quick. Slow it right down. <laughs> and then also we can modulate the cutoff with the LFO. Kind of thing with the rate. You can also set your stuff up for the mod wheel. So you have a vibrato frequency and then vibrato depth. And at the moment, there's kind of nothing going on. If I move my, if I hold the note and move the mod wheel, nothing's going to happen, right? So let's give it some depth for this. So Holding the mod wheel, the mod wheel switched off, to, you know, turned down. Let's turn the mod wheel up. So we really, from I'm going to push the mod wheel up and hold the key. And this is where you'd set. So setting the mod wheel is a good idea to have it full open. Set how much depth you want and the speed. Turn the mod wheel down and then, you know, when you're playing, you can use the mod wheel to adjust. Too much release on that sound for what I want, so... Okay, cool beans. Um, I can show you as well if we put these one of these, at least one of these onto swear. Let's put them both on. And go to our mod section. We can do the pulse width. Double tap to reset. Uh, but you've seen that as well, right? Now we have a chorus. If you're wearing headphones, you'll hear that straight away. A mix for the chorus. I'm just going to turn the volume down of that a little bit. Rate. 
depth mix okay let's let's leave it on but let's have it kind of down in the mix then we have delay feedback mix and time okay so if we look we can scroll around a the time there are lots of them we have it at 164 super fast we have the mix up a little bit but we have the feedback up we'll get like bucket brigade delay effect Okay, and the slower we go, of course, that's still kind of like a, a bucket brigade delay. And I don't think it will self oscillate, which is probably a good thing. And 116's triplet. And then all well, your stuff in between. Let's leave it on 116, but it's sensible. In fact, let's turn the delay off because for the next section, it will make more sense if we have a dry sound. Right, the ARP sequencer looks like there's a lot going on. You've got velocity, which is this control. If I explain the controls first, the length here, and then these kind of tie notes together, these bottom ones, right? And then these switch off steps in the sequencer. So if I turn it on and I just play one note, it's just going to pulse through these 16 steps, right? On what on the, on whatever pitch I play on the keyboard. So if I play C, all these are going to be C. If I play an F, it's all going to be F, right? You're not putting in actual note values. You're just changing the pitch of the selected note sort of thing. So, for example, if I go with this one and I go um up 12 which would be one octave see if i go down one octave if i shorten the length of this velocity now this is this is important to know because you might be playing around with the velocity and thinking well nothing's happening so I'm, I'm gonna kind of draw in a a velocity curve like this so we want our velocity to increase as the notes go up okay and then decrease as they begin to fall here and don't forget at the moment we're just doing some of the basic stuff right so you'll notice if i press a note it, velocity is not doing anything this is because we need to go back to our amp filter and turn our velocity right up right and now velocity is affected we're affecting the velocity with these steps here right now we can also do exactly the same thing with the filter and this sounds quite nice if we turn the velocity up full now the fill it's just the filter controlling the velocity on the sequencer right let's chuck a few extra notes in here let's maybe throw a third and we'll go down off or oh, um, a seventh go down an octave there we can go i think it's oh look at that you can go a lot so you know it's just a matter of you messing around with it i guess so let's do an octave on there and let's maybe leave that at, at its fundamental nodes and we'll go up a couple of notes here and this and that and we'll go you get the idea we'll just put it to so you decide which note you want to play. Now, right, listen, if I switch these on now. See, so like they kind of 
tie together. Or add some sort of accent or something. It's not kind of clear what it does. We have swing. Gate scale. Which affects the whole sequence. Octave. And we can affect that in a negative fashion. This across the top here will switch steps on and off. So maybe we could turn that off, this one, that one maybe, and this one. And now you're kind of gating. It's like a step sequence sort of vibe. A rhythm, more rhythm based. Let's switch these back on for a minute. And let's make these a bit more kind of... In fact, you can also, yeah, you can turn these off and what will happen is it will it'll play this, it will play them, but it will skip them sort of, well, it won't skip them, it will play them, but they'll be silent. So it is a tie, listen. So it'll hold that note till it starts again. Tempo scale, which is again same as your resolution. Let's go. It's going to be very slow. Copy step, paste steps, lock steps, reset steps. You'll probably never ever use that stuff, but it's there if you want it. Now we're going to turn the ARP off and use this sound. In fact, I'm just going to. Use this down sound to uh, mess around with the reverb. So it's really good. Uh, Roomworks is. And bring up the mix a bit, and the delete reverb time. Let's bring up the uh, high level and the low level. You have two level control, uh, quality controls, low and high. So your reverb time, you can really go quite, quite far. 20 seconds, so. That's 50% mix. But you can, if we have the long, if you brighten this up a little bit, you'll really hear now the EQing. So, just let's increase the lower level. lower frequencies coming through diffusion
You'll hear what if we have a, a, a lower a, a, a lower time. And I hold the note and we play with the diffusion. Let's increase the reverb time. If we put this one of these onto sine, we're get, gonna get a really mellow kind of. Delay is cool. So you'll be noticed where you have this at a lower reverb time. It's almost like a delay. Well, it, it is a delay, it's, I mean, like a, an echo. So we can go all the way up to half a second and anywhere all the way down to no milliseconds. Like would be like the biggest room on planet Earth before your reflections came back to you. So a little bit of pre-delay is always probably a good idea. Like is a little bit of diffusion. If it's a low sound like this, we, we could fix this actually by taking up our course tune oscillator one. Making a fifth out of that. guys thanks for watching uh, if you enjoyed the video please drag the like subscribe to the channel please consider becoming a patreon and all the other cool stuff you can do to help support me and joey here at the sound test room there was a good look at microlog which is lovely it's a, it's a real easy sim but it's really nice to dip your toe into the old uh, synth programming land if you're if that's not normally what you kind of do Awesome. Thank you for watching. I will see you later. Ta-da.